Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. We're going to talk about using electron and molecular geometry charts. In a previous video that I'll link to below, I introduced what those terms mean, what electron and molecular geometry means, and how to think about what the shapes look like. In this video, we're just going to talk about how to use the chart to identify either the electron geometry or the molecular geometry. We're going to start with electron geometries, then go to molecular geometries, and then we'll do both together. Okay, first electron geometries. Two steps here. Step one, we're going to count the regions around the central atom. Okay, and then step two is we're going to look up the name of that on the chart. So you'll notice over here we have two regions. That's always a linear electron geometry. Three regions, trigonal planar. Five regions, trigonal bipyramidal, and so forth. So that's it. We count the regions, we look it up. Now, how do we count the regions? Well, here's the trick. A region means an area where there's electrons hanging out. And a lone pair is one of those. So a lone pair counts as one region. A bond is also one. So a single bond counts as one region. Here's where people start to get tripped up. They think a double bond might be two regions. The trick is, in a double bond, those electrons are all hanging out together. And they can't just freely distribute around the molecule. And so a double bond actually still just counts as one region. What's driving all these shapes is the repulsion between the electrons around our central atom. And so those electrons in a double bond stay together, and that drives them to the same shape as if it were a single bond. So just one region there for our double bond. And the same with triple bonds, just counts as one region. Okay, so every single region around the central atom counts as one, whether it's a lone pair, a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. And then we look up the name. So let's practice counting. All right. Let's start with water. So we're gonna start with this and we're just gonna look at the central atom. That means we're looking at oxygen. So we don't look anywhere else on the molecule. We just look at oxygen and then we count those. So let me just underline oxygen. So that's all we're looking at, the central atom because that's what drives shape. So how many regions do I have? Well, I have one lone pair there. So that counts as one. Those stay together, that's why they count as one. A bond, that's the second one. Another lone pair, that's a third one. Another bond, that's a fourth one. So how many regions do I have? Four. And if I look at four on my chart, that gives me a tetrahedral geometry. Cool. What is an electron geometry? Remember, that's how our electrons are distributed around the central atom. So we don't, at this point, care if they're with a molecule or not, or with an atom or not. We're just looking at how the electrons distribute. Okay, now we'll come over to NH3, and we will look at the central atom, which is nitrogen. And around nitrogen, we have one, two, three, four. So still four regions. And so still tetrahedral. Okay, lastly, let's look at carbon dioxide. So we're looking at just carbon in the center. We have one, two. That's it. Some people want to start coming over here and counting these lone pairs. They don't count because they're not on the central atom. So this just has two regions, and we go and we look at two, and we know that's linear. Okay, let's do a few more. All right, we have BF3. So one, two, three regions. Its electron geometry is trigonal planar. Beautiful handwriting, just beautiful. Okay, let's count for ZEF4. One lone pair, two, three, four, five, six. So it has six regions. Each one of those single bonds counts as a region, and each one of those lone pairs counts as a region. The dots on fluorine don't count. They're not on the central atom. They don't determine the shape. And we see that six regions gives us octahedral. Very nice. Lastly... IF5. Count the regions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six regions, also octahedral. So that's electron geometry. Now what we're going to do is work on molecular geometry. What we add here is counting lone pairs. We also add a huge variety in the different types of shapes because you see here that both of these are octahedral in their electron geometry, but they clearly have different shapes because one of them has 
four atoms and the other has five. So these have the same electron geometry, but they'll have a different molecular geometry because their molecules look different because they have different numbers of atoms. And that means there's way more options here. So let's look at that. Okay. So now we still count the regions. And then we also count the lone pairs. Again, just the lone pairs on central. And it is the combination of how many lone pairs they have and how many regions they have that tell us their shape. So for CO2, we saw before it has one, two regions. How many lone pairs? Well, again, we're only counting lone pairs on the central atom, so it has zero. So what that means is we go to the two on the regions, and we go to the zero on the lone pairs, and that means its electron geometry, or its molecular geometry, I'm sorry, is linear. You'll notice in this case, the electron and molecular geometry match, and that happens whenever there's zero lone pairs. So this whole column is actually both the electron geometry and if there's zero lone pairs, it's also the molecular geometry. So this one chart is actually all we need right here. Now I know that's a lot of information, but it's just this one chart to think through. So we count the lone pairs on the central atom and that's what's gonna help us know how far to the left or right we wanna go on this chart. Let's do another one. Okay, now we have back to our water example. And we still have one, two, three, four regions. So four regions, just like we had before. Now we count lone pairs. We have one, two lone pairs. So if I want the molecular geometry, I'm gonna to go to the four on the regions and the two on the lone pairs. And that's gonna give me the bent or angular molecular geometry, bent. It also tells me my bond angles here, which I can read off if I want to. Uh, and that's the angle between the two things that are bonded to my central atom. Okay, let's do another one. In this case, we're actually going to do both the molecular and electron geometry now. So, first, count the regions around the central atom, which is sulfur. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So I don't distinguish between lone pairs or bonds when I'm counting the regions. That's five regions. Now, I'm counting just lone pairs. And I see, oh, there's one there. So for my molecular geometry, I'm going to go to my five on the number of regions and my one on my lone pair. And that's going to give me sawhorse or seesaw. I prefer seesaw, but you can write either. Now, what about for my electron geometry? For my electron geometry, I always use the first column. So it doesn't matter how many lone pairs I have. If I'm thinking about electron geometry, it's going to be trigonal bipyramidal. So trigonal bipyramid. Now, why are those different? Well, remember, molecular geometry tells me how my atoms are arranged around the central atom. And those only four fluorines, and they actually make sort of a little seesaw. On the other hand, my electron geometry tells me how my electrons are arranged. And then I'm including my lone pair, just as if it were any other region of electrons. Okay, let's do one last example. Here I have this crazy molecule, F2O. O2, O, F2, and I'm going to count the number of regions. So around my central atom, which is oxygen, and I have one, two, three, four regions. Very good. And now I'm going to count just lone pairs, and I have one, two. Remember, the lone pairs on fluorine don't count. We're only looking at the central atom here. So it's almost like you can just block these out of your view. Don't think about them. Just count stuff around the central atom. So the molecular geometry, I'm gonna to go to the number of regions, which is four, and the number of lone pairs, which is two, and that's gonna once again give me a bent or angular molecular geometry. The electron geometry, I just used always the first column. So when I'm asking about the electron geometry, it's like I should pretend this part of the chart just doesn't exist. So my electron geometry goes with four regions, which is gonna be tetrahedral. All right. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Hopefully this helps you use the electron and molecular geometry charts. If you have any questions, leave those below.